Dr. Sumir Sethi, founder and head, Delhi Academy of Medical Sciences. Uh, thanks, Dr. Sethi, for joining in. So at the end of the day, we have most of our radiology residents and fellows who are very much interested on their own, and they have the zeal and passion to learn, and most of them are really embracing the next generation technology with open arms. Uh, I would like to introduce our next panelist, Dr. Sumir Sumer Sethi now. He's the uh, founder and head of Delhi Academy of Medical Sciences and Dr. Sumer has also been heading leading firms in Indian tele-radiology solutions. So he is the right person for this. Dr. Sumer, if I might br uh, bring you in and if you can highlight us and enlighten us on the two-way interactions in the video conferen uh, conferencing and how does uh, what is the role of app-based learning in medical education? your own experiences on it, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sodhi, and thank you to all the previous speakers for enlightening us uh, with a lot of information. Now, what I will share with you is my own experience in 2020. Uh, 2020 has been a year which was unpredicted. We, we Nobody had an idea there would be a lockdown or there would be a pandemic. And we were running an educational institute, uh, which has, uh, you know, we have around 250 branches across the country where there were you know classes happening with the students learning uh, face to face or through uh, satellite based technology and suddenly everything was closed down and one of the most important goal that we had as an organization was to maintain continuity of education for our students and i think you know if we you know look at all the panelists and everybody listening to us everybody as a teacher had a single goal in 2020 was that somehow we should maintain the continuity of education for our students and uh, that is where we had an initiative. We started this initiative in 2017, and but we never knew that it would come so handy in 2020. <laughs> and because suddenly 2020 accelerated everything by five years. I think what was supposed to happen in 2024 in e-learning is happening today. And uh, we used our app eMedicos. In this app, we developed a two-way video conferencing solution, which could be run batch by batch. And uh, like Dr. Gehloth rightly pointed out that if we have a mass delivery, you know, individual attention doesn't happen. So we could do video conferencing, multiple channels on our app. We could go batch by batch. And uh, with this uh, two-way interaction with the students who had a chat box, they had tools like polls, they could vote, they could, uh, you know, uh, comment. I, I, you know, I'll take the permission of the organizers if they could allow me to share my screen. I, I want to, you know, show one or two episodes of this uh, journey that we had in the last year of e-learning. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, you're able to see my screen here. Uh, is, is everybody able to see? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is the window that we created. This is the landscape mode of our uh, app. Now, what we could do was that we started off with necessity that we are trying to, you know, uh, plug the gap in information, but then we became more creative. Now, with technology, we suddenly had an advantage that if I'm teaching to a medical student or a resident, we could give him multiple perspective. So in front of you in a screen, we have a pathologist, a radiologist, a cardiologist, a physiologist, a pharmacologist. And now what I wanted to add here is that technology opened this window that, you know, earlier, I, you know, we could never have had, you know, such a session where 10 people, 20, uh, 5 people, 7 people are teaching together. Now we we got this opportunity to somehow you know you know put multiple educators also together, and the second thing that I felt was enlightening for us this year was the chat box. The students in a classroom they not only want to listen to the teacher they want to talk to each other also. So the chat box started by you know teachers as you people asking questions to the teachers. And then it went on to students interacting amongst themselves. So I think that was one of the, you know, things that we did this year. So we could actually mark things. There could be, a, you know, we could use a chat box with, you know, interactions and polls. I, I feel that this is something which is just you know, allow me to stop my screen. I feel this is something which is going to stay. Uh, this uh, the technology that has happened right now is not just a pandemic solution. It is it is now going to stay. Now, when I look back in the same event that we are talking today, I think one year or two year back, I would have you know, and I'm sure all of the panelists would agree, we would have traveled to talk 15 minutes. So we would have actually traveled maybe three hours, four hours, or you know, 
sat, waited for our turns. We would have had coffee. You know, so we, we would do this in a five-star hotel. But suddenly, we are doing it right now online at the comfort of our homes or offices or clinics. I think it's going to stay. I think the two-way video conferencing is going to be the key theme going forward. But it is two-way. So even if you're delivering masks, you have to have somehow mechanism of individual interactions. That is my two points into it. Thank you, sir. Uh, we would like to hear something about app-based learning as well. I mean, webinars is one thing, teaching program is one thing. What about app-based learning? Just having some apps on some particular things. What, what is your own experience in this? And something about which we can uh, perhaps imbibe in our, uh, for our radiology residents and fellows. Sumit? So, so, thank you, sir. So what I have learned is that in app-based learning, there are like, there we have like a balance between two things, comfort as well as interactivity. Like, uh, for example, like if suppose a event is happening in America, definitely the time zone will be different. But if I attend it live, I have the, you know, the luxury or the, you know, the advantage of interacting. You can, you know, uh, interact in the live polls that are going on or you can chat or you, know, you have the interactivity. But then you have the comfort of video on demand that if you have, you miss out something because of different problems, you have that video on demand. So video on demand is a comfort, but it is, it often, uh, what I have learned in the last one year is, I, I don't know what is the experience of other speakers is I tend to procrastinate. If there is a video that is downloaded in my phone, I tend to say, okay, okay, I will see it in the afternoon after my ultrasounds of the morning are over. Then I think that, okay, I'm tired. I'll see it in the night. Then I think, okay, I'll see it tomorrow. And by the time uh, the, the, the validity of the program itself gets over and I'm not seeing the recorded video at all. So <laughs> I don't know because I, so what I believe is that narrow balance. So interactivity is the key word. I think if we don't build an interactivity into our app based learning tool, then it becomes uh, it becomes uh, you know dependent on the willpower of the student and like dr malini already pointed out that in the current generation it, it is like they, they want everything very very fast they, they can't like you can't have them to say that in discipline that 9 9 30 you will put on the recorded lecture they will not they will postpone it so that is thing second thing is visualization I just, you know, would share a screen and uh, some tiny experiments that we did this year. One of the things that we did this year was like uh, we had first year MBBS students with us who were, uh, are you able to see, had not gone to the dissection hall at all. So we tried two things to show them. We, we actually got our faculty member to use the uh, actual set of bones and we showed them the bones, like, you know, Dr. Malini mentioned the bone club. So we did a bone club for the undergraduate. So we, Okay, I think uh, unable to share. Okay, and second thing that we did was we used uh, some three D models to do improve the visualization of brain. And uh, I wanted to share it, but uh, unfortunately I'm unable to share it right now. But once we get it, I'll show it to you. Third thing I have used is social media, and I, I wanted to point out this at this juncture with this. That in my own experience, uh, I have used uh, like as early as two thousand and four. Before the advent of Facebook, I started using blogs to share cases, which was much faster than a traditional journal publication. And that was before the WhatsApp era. So I started a blog in 2004. And I, the beauty of this is that we formed a community of medical bloggers across the world in 2004, and which also had Dr. Bhaveen uh, Zankari from uh, India, our you know, respected Bhaveen Zankari, all the, we know. So we, I, I you know, so I, I did not know him. I like that was like 16 years back. But because he was blogging, I was blogging. We could connect into a, a, a say kind of a community. And I see similar communities happening after every event today. And uh, like with a hashtag in Twitter, hashtag Facebook, we all connect and we all express our views about the talk and what we are learning. After. So I think we need to look at education as a continuum. Uh, uh, physical delivery methods would definitely be there. There is no uh, replacement of you know meeting people, shaking hand, having a coffee. I, I miss the coffees in between in the break. So I think that would they be there, but there will be a lot more audience joining from remote locations in future through apps, and each event would have a separate app. 
uh, this is what I feel. Each event like uh, RSNA or big events would always have their own apps and they would live stream on the app itself. And uh, Deepak, I'm now sharing my screen again. Uh, if it works, I'll do this. Okay. I, okay, let me try it again. Okay, I think now it was sharing. Did it come? Okay, yes. So this was the bone club that we were talking about and we we helped a lot of students to you know, visualize bones when the pandemic did not allow them to go to the medical college. And this is how we taught the brain anatomy to the first year students. This is just a beginning of using like a bit of a uh, augmented reality, a bit of it, just a bit of it. We started with the, you know, how to tell them that okay, brain is a three dimensional structure. Then we went on to show them the CT scans. And we ended up actually getting a special mention by PM Modi in the app innovation challenge about our app this year. And so I just wanted to showcase the power of if we add apps to social media. Now, 8.4 million people have visited my blog in the last 16 years now. And if I look at the people from this is the kind of you know places that we, this traffic is coming to my blog. And I started a radiology resident club on Facebook and we are today at 32,000 members and uh, with members from all the countries like India, Pakistan, Egypt, uh, UAE, US, everywhere. So uh, my understanding is, uh, although, you know, with, uh, you know, with the esteemed panel today is that, you know, we are all, you know, as teachers, we are all trying our bit to deliver. And, you know, I would, you know, it is like, I'm totally so excited when Dr. Sodhi says that he is teaching his residents. So, you know, I, I would say, sir, why not, you know, increase that reach? Why limit to, you know, your residents teach everybody, sir, everybody would want to learn from you. So I think that is the power of technology, social media put in, we can disseminate massively. Sure. So I think first, uh, before anything, uh, Sumer, your blog was kind of the first radiology blog that we read as soon kind of when we were just out of our training. And that time it was a very exciting thing. I still remember we didn't have our phones, we didn't have computers at home. So you would go to the internet cafe to read that. And so, I, I just, uh, I'd like to add a line here, just, just because of my experience as a teacher, as well as uh, my radiologist over the years is, Number one is that we have now moved to an era of oligemia to plethora. I, I just want to uh, translate it in English for the non radiologist listening to us. That when I was doing my post graduation, we had very little information that is oligemia, too, too little information. Like, suppose if I was looking at an x ray chest and I had a doubt, uh, I'm, I'm not you know lying, I'm not exaggerating, I'm telling the truth. I used to stand outside my professor's room and the professor was always busy. They would say, and they would often ignore us also for second year residents. You know, they say, wait, wait. And you would wait with that x ray film. Now you have, you know, you can't go back also because you are now outside your professor's room. So you would stand there for half an hour, 45 minutes till the time sir or madam would invite you inside. And then you ask, and then they would tell you, what is this opacity looking like? And today the residents are taking a picture, sitting on the WhatsApp group, getting opinions here and there. And, you know, things are moving very fast. So uh, technology is a great enab enabler. But another thing that has come out of it is plethora. Now there are so many resources and you know so many conferences, so many events happening, so many webinars happening. So uh, intelligent. So we again we would now the skill would be like for our time the skill was to find where are the resources. Now the problem is what are the resources that I should look at and what are the things that I can avoid and I can live my normal life otherwise also. So I think the balance between this would be the key in the future in this domain. Sure, that is so so true. I'm reminded of my own residency days as well. And then school days, uh, though I'm not a radi radiologist or a doctor, it was a very nice session, uh, uh, particularly when uh, the pandemic is locked down for six months and everybody is in the virtual world, literally. So uh, thanks to all the panelists here for taking out time and giving us their views on this such important topic and uh, we would like to uh, give a speaker certificate to all our panelists here uh, can i ask my